Whether you need to restock the fridge or just have a sudden, intense craving for cheese puffs, Kroger Delivery will get you just what you need in as little as 30 minutes. From groceries to household items, Kroger delivers right to your door. So don't let one major craving have you reaching for your car keys. Open the Kroger app and start your cart, whatever the cart. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Delivery times not guaranteed. Restrictions may apply. See site for details. Available for lease, for beginner and experienced gardeners. Join us on most Saturdays between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. at 32 Southside Avenue. Or visit our New Leaf Community Garden Facebook page to learn more. This is Jared Rutledge of the Columbus River Dragons, your home for River Dragons hockey in Noonan. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this station, its management, or its clientele. Welcome to Connecting Hearts. Connecting hearts of women to resources, information, and to one another. Presented by Creative Heart Studios, 18 Perry Street and New. Now here's your host, Margie Conway. This is Margie from Connecting Hearts Network. I'd like you to take just a moment and listen to Linda Kirkpatrick explain to you what Family Patterns Matters is all about. Family Patterns Matter works with youth and their families to help overcome barriers that prevent their success. We meet twice a month with mentoring, tutoring, teaching life skills, resilience, gratitude, and kindness. We also bring music and art therapy. Please visit our website at www.familypatternsmatter.org. Hello. I'm Pina Payne with Contour Mortgage, and we're so excited. We have just moved to this new company, and we are located at 560 Noonan Crossing Bypass in Noonan next to Art and Jake's, and we have some great products. Our interest rates are better than any other companies, and we also have some great products with the for the VA. Um, we can do a better deal for you with fees than any other company. We have a lot of different kind of programs. Hey guys, this is Dana with Happy Life Nutrition located on 18 Perry Street, downtown Newman. Hours are 8 to 5, Tuesday through Friday. Come check us out. We will be serving up meal replacement shakes, calorie burning teas, coffees, waffles. We have a kids menu and a workout menu. We do deliveries with a five drink minimum or five dollar delivery charge if less. You can call ahead for your order. Free Wi-Fi, quiet atmosphere for business meetings or get together. Our number at Happy Life Nutrition is 770-683-5172. Can't wait to see you. Hi, I'm Holly Reese. I'm the founder of Warrior Defenders. I'm a certified tactical self-defense instructor. And I specialize in women's self-defense. I teach technical drills for survival skills and education on self-defense tools and how to use them. My journey started in self-defense because I'm a domestic violence survivor. I'm here to empower women, to teach them how to be their own heroes, and to learn today to have a safer tomorrow. It's too easy, I just kill it when... Hi, this is Margie Conway from the Creative Heart Studio, and this is the Connecting Hearts Network program. Uh, we have a lot going on, and September is going to bring some new things over at the studio, as well as with our Connecting Hearts. For one thing, Ryan is going to be glad to hear me say this. We are going to give him our first tea talk so it can air the first weekend in September. We've got several people lined up, and our tea talks is going to be pre-recorded. Um, I'm inviting groups of people into my studio after hours, and we are sitting there around some tea having a discussion about whatever our topics are. So, so far lined up, um, we have, um, I've started inviting some of the other ladies who are doing shows here on the radio to come talk to me about women and podcasting and sharing our stories. Um, I've got some teachers, I've got some insurance people, I've got just some creative people and just several different groups lined up so that we can talk to you. So I wanted to make sure I had a good calendar organized before I did it because you're not going to want to just hear me talk around some tea like you sometimes put up with up here when I come in alone. So anyway, we're going to start that the first weekend in September. And then at the end, I'll tell you a few other things that we've got going on that you're going to want to mark the dates down because some of our sponsors have some events going on and we're going to do another selfie pop-up studio at the end of the month during the fall art walk. But today we have 
Olga back with us. And Olga is going to talk to us about being a Tanadula. Hi, Olga. Thanks for coming. Good morning, Margie. Thank you again for inviting me here to talk about a subject that not many people like to talk about. But I am very right. blessed um, that after I experienced the loss of a son, as many of you may remember from the first time I was able to be on the podcast uh -huh. with you, and I thank you again because really it's so important, uh, the experiences that we go through after we lose a loved one. In yes. my case, I lost a son, and that is the reason why I am here. I certify myself as a Tanadula just to kind of like face the subject of death. And believe it or not, that helped me a lot right. in transforming the pain and the grief that I was feeling after the loss of my son. Well, we, we mention all the time here with all of our guests, according to the Bible, it says to comfort others with what you have been comforted with. So whatever area you have been able to heal the most from, that is what you're used, supposed to comfort others. And we also know that our healing is multi-layered. Um, we take many steps to, to deal with it, and we deal with it as we can do it. And being able to turn it to good and help other people through a process that you found so difficult is, is really amazing work. That is correct. Again, I feel blessed. So thank you for this opportunity. And today, uh, we're going to talk about what is called, or usually known as advanced care directives. After we went through the experience of losing our son, uh, which it was a tragic death, uh, of course, you know, as uh, when we lose loved ones, it could be due to a disease, an illness, it could be due to many things. Um, in our case, it was, you know, all of a sudden, it was tragic, so we had no time to do what I'm going to explain right. today, which is very, very important. I guess for all of you, um, with COVID, that's a great example. Right. COVID made us feel closer to death right. <laughs> than ever. Um, we had to deal, many families, many people had to deal with losing loved ones, mm -hmm. and that can also con be considered tragic. Um, so advanced care directives. We're gonna hold, do, yeah. hold on one second. Let me ask you to back up just a little bit and sure. tell our audience, in case they don't remember, what is a Tanadula and what kind of training did you go through to do this? Tanadula. Tanadula, I'll be honest with you, Margie. I had a friend that was a, is a volunteer at a hospice here in Noonan. Right. I am also a volunteer there. It is through her that I heard the word. Right. And it's commonly known as death doula. But no, right. I'm not going to use that term. That's going to make people run away, I believe. Yeah, it could be, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, thanadula. Thanadula it comes from the word thana, T-H-A-N-A, -A, thanatology. Right. And thanatology is basically the science that studies anything related with death, all aspects of death. Not just, when you think of a death, it's not just talking about after the person passes. Right. It's in preparation of. Right. And that's the part that I'm going to get more involved with. I'm going to be doing both before and after, but getting ready to. I'm doing it through the hospice. Uh, it's experiences that you gain as you sit with people that right. are in the transition. Okay. Well, it is, I've been through um, the deaths of three very close family members, and two of them was through hospice. Okay. And hospice, uh, it had changed over the years from my grandmother to my aunt, to where my aunt was more supportive of the whole family. Matter of fact, they still send me a card and things, you know, to support me through that. Um, with my mom, it, it was sudden and tragic, so, you know, we didn't get a chance to prepare anything. But I already had a few things prepared from my experiences with my grandmother and my aunt. And you know what? It's funny as you talk about that, Margie, when I did the training, mm -hmm. one of the things that I remember hearing the instructor talk about, and I loved it, she said, many people do Thanadula work without knowing it. Right. Because you, like you're saying, perfect example, we have loved ones, there's always someone in the family, in most families, right. that have that ability, have that ability of being there, sitting there. Most people, if I say birth doula, everybody knows what a birth doula right. is. Birth midwife. Well, it's basically the same. A thanadula, it is a dead doula, but it is instead of being on one end of the spectrum, which is at the beginning of life, we are going to sit with someone at the end of their lives. And again, that's not limited to that. That's just one of the aspects of things that thanadulas can do. Right. They do a little bit more are different than hospice workers do. Hospice workers are, are more caregiving and, and health concerns. But yes. Tanadulas, or thanadulas, I'm sorry, um, from what you've been educating me about, they, they help you get more prepared for the process 
And from some of the projects and things you've been sharing with me, um, I was reading something the other day and it said we've gone more from using the term, in most cases, funeral to celebration of life. Yes. So it lo yes. It, it's from yes. what you've done it is the celebration See, of their life. While it, it all depends on what yeah. stage of the, the passing, of, right. meaning if, if we're talking about preparing for the death of the person, okay, let's talk about hospice. Right. Let me, let me explain. Hospice uh, workers or mm -hmm. employees, they're limited to medical care. Right. They do take thanatology courses, and this is when it gets interesting. When I remember hearing about the th thanadula, this friend of mine told me in December, I was like, what is that? So I started doing the research, and right. I'm in the quest of trying to find ways to deal with the grief of my son. It's going to be three years on September 18th. So I remember that one of the things I still felt was to face the fact of death. Right. That we, <laughs> there's an end. There's an expiration day, like Mr. Personality will right. say, by the way. Okay, for all of us. So anyhow, going back to the hospice, employees at the hospice can only have an approach, a medical approach. Right. They become somehow friends of the patients, but they have to be careful. They separate um, the medical aspect from the emotional, right. when they need companionship. They can know do that right. because they have a job to do. So us as hospice volunteers, which I love, right now what I've been doing, I'm limited to, I've been doing is medic, um, um, administrative work. I just, I'll take care on the front office, uh, welcome people. But eventually, as I have more time, I, will, I sit with patients. I've done it right. twice. So far, a sacred journey. I love it. Um, this might sound amazing. Like my friends say, um, I would like to be able soon to sit with someone and then start being there for them, giving them a dignifying and of their lives. Well, yeah, that, that, that encompasses, en encompasses a lot of things. It does. And the training and did explain that to into us. We're that. The, yes. um, one hospice, the, the main hospice worker I had with my grandmother, I did uh, remark to her that, you know, th this, I don't see how you do this, you know, continuously. I love my grandmother, so I'm here for her, but I don't see how you can do that. And um, she said something that stuck with me that, that, you know, since then, she said she considers it no greater honor and privilege than to be able to to sit with a saint and and help them as they're at the end of their life. That to them, her, it was just an honor and privilege to be able to do that for them. And you know, the, one of the most beautiful things, and again, I repeat, for me, the decision to take the certification as a Santa Dula was just trying to find that one last bit of something that helped me not be afraid of losing another child. Right. I lost a son. I have another five children. One is in heaven. But that fear of another day came and I will lose. Another. It's reality. Right. Because it happened. It, we, we were faced with that. And I think it's the best thing I did. And like you said at the very beginning, I feel blessed that because I've been on those shoes, I did not stay stuck there with yes. the grieving and try to find constructive ways to just move forward. Yes. Move and, forward. And we do that in our Her Journey training. We say you get into a valley. I love it. I love you it. you do not pitch your tent and stay stuck there, you work your way out of that valley and up that mountain so you can see light again. And I have seen you do that through this training. So let's get into our topic today. Tell us uh, some about the legal documents. And, and I do want to point out that um, part of... Olga's other positions is she does do legal legal documents. She is a notary. She does work with Spanish-speaking community on all types of legal documents and government services and something. So this is not something she's just pulling out of a notebook and says, here, let me tell you about this. She is trained in this and knows what she's talking about. So she's going to fill us in on some well, legal documents and things to prepare for the passing of a loved one. Very life. important to make a clarification that I don't provide legal advice. Right. That is for lawyers. That depends on the situation of a family. Right. So most families in, 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 um, will have no issues. Like this. an example, uh, when it happens that you need a lawyer, it's when families cannot come to an agreement. Right. There are many documents out there, you know, up. I just ask, sit with the, with the family, depending on where they live, because this is important, by the way. When we talk about advanced care uh, directives, um, advanced care directives, now we're going to get into the medical. This is what we're going to talk about here, is just so you can be prepared in case of a person, something die, happens, they die, it takes away, as it is when we die, we 
our loved ones are going to grieve. They're going to miss right. us. This pain. So we make things easier for them yes. after the fact, after yes. we transition. So, and I use the word transition, by the way. Yes. I, I try not to use the word um, dying. It's just transitioning. Yes. Um, okay. So we live in this world and then we go into depending on our faith and what we believe, right? We're going to be in another plane. That's not the best way I describe it. It's very important for me to say that I am a Christian, and, but I, I approach families and cases as a non-denominational. Right. I have to respect their culture, respect their religion. That is super important for it me. Is, yes. I'm a person, as you well know, very diverse culturally. So I grew up in different um, cultures and well, and mainly in the Catholic uh, faith. But I have to approach it as a professional in a non-denominational way. I draft documents as it is. Yes, I have been doing that since 2016. And I do have to understand that depending on the state the person lives at, things have to be, you have to be watched when you write a document. Make sure that it's um, fit to the state, legally binding. But I don't offer legal advice. I'll sit with the families. I'll ask the do questions, the proper questions, and I can assist them to draft those documents. Yes. It's one of the things I do as an okay. All right. On advanced directives, I know my grandmother had a a, a do not resuscitate order, and they did resuscitate her into the ambulance, and that caused us all kinds of consequences, not only her health-wise, because she didn't ever recover from it, but also through our family, because then it left hard decisions to me the yeah. other family members puts a burning in one side more than the other. About, yes. But I knew I was honoring what her said, what what she had said to me. Um, but as I dealt with her and went through that, then I went to my mom and my aunt and other people and said, "Here, we have these documents. We're going over them and fill them out." So head us into that direction. Well, okay, it's one of the services I'm going to offer as a Tanadula and to encourage and assist people to decide to prepare documents in advance. That's right. what they work. Advance. Most people don't want to talk about this, but again, it's a reality that we have to, you know, be at present in our lives. So the for, form of paperwork that will establish what kind of medical care will the person want. Now, I think it's a blessing to say that it's going to be a work that's going to be acting as a mediator kind mm-hmm. of thing, because you said it. You said you said it just a, a second ago. There will be something, say, as a mother and father. I'm a daughter. I have another two brothers and a sister. When our parents are gonna, will you know, die, right. we need to talk and sit and say, okay, so what does he want? What does she want? Yes. And then what the family agrees is okay. But at the end of the game, what I have to tell families is what matters is what the patient, the person, right. or, you know, that is making the decisions wants as their end of life. Absolutely. There's a lot of problems that happens in families where they know, they've heard, I've heard grandma say this, I've heard mom say this, but then like you say, they pass, they don't have this paperwork ready and it creates even, it's what you never, uh, you've heard the term, uh, putting salt to injury. Yes. That's what happens. Families grieve, they lost a loved one and then they find themselves in the middle of this struggle. It's emotional stress. It's pain. It's more pain. When it start fighting over, like, no, but he said this and he said that, oh, and we don't need that. We can I avoid that. I will tell that. you, it's, it's been maybe 10 years since my grandmother passed, and I'm still estranged from her nephew and, and her sister because of the conflict that was there. Um, I, I decided I didn't need that in my life, and so I separated myself from it. And, exactly, it and, caused division and, between know, families. It, it does. Division in the family. It does. Um, so it is important to have these. So to me, that up. mediation part is super important, right. simply because we went through that as a family when Mike died. You remember I shared right. that with you when I we talked. And so yes, assisting the person, but also helping them come to terms with their families. Hey, that's what I want. Yeah. Because my main focus is going to be that person, not the family. Right. That person is the one that's hiring me, wants to sit down and say, you know what, I would like to do this, this, and this. Luckily, that person has the support of their families, but sometimes it may not be the case. Oh, right. So Olga comes into the picture in Spanish, English, or Portuguese, and try, because I'm blessed with those languages, but to communicate, to communicate between the two parts, so it brings peace before. Right. Nobody wants to think we're going to die. No. Yeah, but you know what? It's reality. So that provides to the person a sense of peace. You're right. I remember when I heard about that, when we were getting certified, and that was also another part that got to me. And it's, it made total sense, of course. Right. You know, we went through that. When my son died, no one had a clue. And dad wanted to do this, and I wanted to do that, and the kids, the siblings wanted to do And we found ourselves struggling. And I'm not lying. Our son's body almost ended up in probate court. 
I understand. This is a perfect yeah. example because there was nothing in writing. We had no idea. And then again, 21 year olds are how you prepare, right? right? So most cases, in the normal cases, we're talking about people that either they know they have an illness, that they're gonna, they've been told they're going to, you know, they have a certain date that they're going to die or a certain time, or age, or, okay, or illness. But anyhow, the main point about the medical directives, one of them is people don't know that they don't need a lawyer. Right. I'm not saying anything out of the order. It's you will need a lawyer, as I said at the beginning, if there is a situation when you cannot come to an agreement with, especially if the person, if in the case, case we're talking about a parent, their siblings, and the siblings are not agreeing to do this, this and that, and they're going to make it, they're going to cause, uh, they're going to interfere, and then they're going to let things flow. So then I suggest you go get a lawyer. I think in my case, it's the almost perfect scenario is working with a family that they all almost come into an agreement. They just need a little push emotionally, right. spiritually, to just sit down and say, okay, you know what? We understand. You're right. Yeah. It's really the main person, the person that died, whatever wishes they, they, you know, they decide how to die. Okay? What, what to happen to them if, again, here we, we are referring to miracle directives. Yes. This is important because there's another aspect where I can sit with people at their home and talk in, adv in, in advance of what they want to, uh, how do they want before they die, things for, for certain things to happen. In this case today, we're speaking about medical directives. I have a medical office administration degree, by the way. I know the paperwork involved within the medical field. Mm -hmm. And what is happening, and I've seen it happen many times, and we talked about that in our certification. That's happening a lot in the U.S. and the Canada. People that end up at a hospital, and they are trying to understand, how come I don't want to be plugged into a machine? Right. Oh, how come I want to see my family? I'm dying. Why they don't let me see them? Hathana Dula advocates for that person. Good. And that brings me back to when you mentioned the hospice, not only at a hospice, at a hospital, we become that person that connects, that gives the emotional, holistic approach right. to the patient and connects the medical uh, personnel with the person. That's good. And makes, communicates. Right. And advocates for the person especially when they're in the hospital. And to me, medical uh, directives are also known as medical power of attorney. Yes. It's very important. We are talking about, remember, we mentioned a bit ago about what happens after I die, my family, all the mess, assets, name it. What I left and what I didn't leave and what do I want after I die. We're talking about when someone goes to the hospital, and this is the main point here, is to be prepared and have a document that will direct doctors and family too. Yes. Because sometimes families are not as involved in the person's lives. And when they get sick and they end up in a hospital, all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait, but I thought he wanted this. I would have pictured that he wanted this. And it creates problems, conflicts, and emotional, yeah. okay, stress, unnecessary stress. So you don't need a lawyer, number one. Um, then um, when the doctors, okay, depending on the state that the person leaves, it's important to know, obviously, to create this document. But the person in advance can let the doctors know if X, Y, or C happens, what do I want you to do? Yes. And it makes the doctors and their job easier, the but hospital it's easier. Very specific. You don't oh we can yes, be. And many people don't specific. know that. Yes. And unfortunately that's what I was trying to say, and it's it's happening a lot where people are not understanding why they're stuck in a hospital and they don't know their rights. I just experienced that not too long ago. A, a friend, uh, the, parent, the mother, was in the hospital. And thank God I, I did put my Sanadula uh, experience yes. and knowledge into practice and told her, nope, you have the right to do this, this, and that. It's true in their case they didn't have a medical directive, advanced medical directive document. But and unfortunately they had to go all the way, trying to get their mother out of there yeah. because they wanted her to die at home. Right. That's a perfect example. That's a big deal, yeah. And believe it or not, many people won't believe what I'm going to say. Or maybe when I say it, they're going to be like, yeah, I want to die in my home. Why can't I not do it? Yeah. And more than 85% of people, if they know they're going to die, they rather do it at the peace and comfort of their home. Right. Not at a hospital. You're right. So hospitals, because the person doesn't have anything that can give them a guidance, well, you're in their hands, right? So a doctor knows best. That's why we assume. But no, we're talking about 
the physical medical approach to a patient, okay, that's what happens in a hospital. But we dismiss the mental and the spiritual needs of right. that person. And that is what a thanadula comes into place in dos. Yes. And I feel blessed again that, you know, I was pushed to this field because of the loss of my son. So to mention the, uh, another important thing you're, is you're going to have to summarize the, the medical directive and tell them how they can get in touch with you or put one into play. Put one into play. Yes, because we we'll, we we talk a lot. <laughs> it's important. It's important so that when I work with families, that we talk with families. Yes. And and we let them know that when we do this document, also make a copy available to their doctors. Yes. That's important. Once you do that, um, Amer advanced American direct medical directive documents. Also, another important thing is that they don't have to be written in stone. In other words, yeah. once they're done throughout the lifetime of that person if later on they want to edit anything or modify they can always do that okay like any right. document that is done uh, for these purposes uh, you can reach me at 407-965-9343 I am just recently starting to get involved in this field very soon I will have my website Yes, okay, I where you can have yes, and media. yes. At the time being, I'm working through the network group we have, yes. which I also feel so lucky to be part of. In word of mouth, people that know me already have known our family, and but I'm eventually going to yeah. Well, okay. I have a client to talk soon to you have about a website. As, as soon as we get through with this, because someone that we know is is about at the point that they need these services. And it, it's, you know, just from my personal experiences, I think it is, is a great field to be in. I think it's a good healing opportunity for you to turn things, you know, to the good. And, and I know that it will help a lot of families as they progress through this. Because, yeah, you know, this is a serious subject that we're talking about today. Yes. Sometimes we get in here and laugh. Sometimes we don't. But, you know, life is like that. It has its ups and it has its, its problems and it has things that we do have to deal with. And unfortunately, um, even our Bible study yesterday was talking about your fears and how Satan will attack you through whatever your fears are. We are afraid to talk about death and we're afraid to think about our loved ones or even ourselves being put on ventilators which is happening more and more now and and being in a Correct. position where they can't make those decisions so it is important to talk about it now and have it sit down so like you said your family knows what you want right and you know i was at a conference last week what a great conference for bereaved parents and there was one thing that one of the presenters or speakers said that i would like to share as a closing yes. from my part it just got to me of course for real is he said what we run from pursues us what we face transforms us i loved when i heard him say that i couldn't help but think of all my journey since i lost my son and how i'm here doing this right and yes there are moments that are happy. You know, most people that hear about doulas know about birth doulas. Right. But the fact of the matter is a cycle of life starts with birth, but it ends. Well, and, with death. and it does tell you in the Bible, so, for us personally, it's, it, 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 it's death. Death and transition can be sad. But yes. according to the Bible, um, that's, precious that's is the death of a saint in the eyes of the Lord. So this is something that, you know, it's hard to do, but it's something we need to face up and handle it now so we don't get stuck in a rut or in a bad position later. Well, because like the Bible says, okay, our life, existence doesn't end yes. when we leave this physical That's plane it. but when we leave this physical plane leaving peace behind to our loved ones is very important yes it is, it is and thank important. you very much for that service thank that you're you doing for your invitation so yeah to the um, we will get olga on and talk to her some more about this um we'll do a video and put it on our site that we're working on now, let me fill you in on a few things that we have coming up with the group um we do have our tea talks coming out the first weekend in september um, the second Monday, because we're not doing it on Labor Day, we're going to start having our uh, Shibboleth group, which is the diet lifestyle, healthy eating, all that good stuff that we're going to do. It is free for you to get involved in right now, so you can contact me, and I'll hook you up with Vicki to get signed up for that. 
And then on the 22nd is the Fall Art Walk in Noonan. Happy Life and Creative Hearts Studios and our network is going to set up the Happy Hearts pop-up selfie studio again. We're going to have an art studio. And most of the stuff in this art studio is in a Russell Crowe movie. And it actually belongs to my son, the artist. So you will be able to come and put yourself in that set from that movie and pretend you're the artist and see some great art from some healing art from some local people. Um, I usually end this by saying, walk up and down Perry Street and open the doors and yell for Margie. But I'm going to kind of change it up because I got a little cute Mini Cooper that's red with the black stripes. And now I'm saying if the Mini is here, Margie is near. So look for that Mini Cooper because there's not many of them around here. People keep saying it suits me. And I'm like, well, I'm not cute and little, so it must be the fun and quirky part, and they agree with that. So remember, if you see the mini is here, Margie is near. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to Connecting Hearts, Connecting Hearts of Women to Resources, Information, and to One Another. Presented by Creative Heart Studios, 18 Perry Street, here in Noonan, 404-528-528. 8461. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Stay cool this summer with AC Pro and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Right now, get a $15 O'Reilly Auto Parts gift card after mail in rebate with the purchase of select AC Pro ready to use refrigerant products that include a hose and gauge. Beat the heat before you hit the road with AC Pro at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts Right here in your neighborhood Here's a little tale about hard to recycle plastics Their destinies were changed Their new lives are fantastic What once was trash can live on as new things With a program that complements your regular recycling Cause plastics can be so much more Give this trash the second chance it was Hard to recycle plastics can be so much more. Participate in the Hefty Energy Bag program happening in your neighborhood today.